You're watching Africa 54. I'm Esther Gidu. You are here in Washington. President Trump proposes to make big cuts in spending on global health research that could affect work to end malaria, AIDS, and protect against other infectious diseases. Although the president's proposal is essentially a wish list and Congress doesn't have to go along with it, some see it as a part of a disturbing trend. Carol Pearson reports. When the Ebola crisis erupted in 2014, Dr. Tom Frieden, the director of the Centers for Disease Control, and other staff went to West Africa to help contain the pandemic. The National Institutes of Health funded research and supported pharmaceutical giants to produce a vaccine. NIH has also been instrumental in the fight against AIDS and malaria. AIDS deaths are now close to half of what they were in 2005, and researchers seem to be closing in on a malaria vaccine. President Trump's proposed 2018 budget calls for significant cuts in funding for NIH and the CDC. If these cuts as proposed were enacted, um, uh, it would have severe impact. Um, on health security. The National Academy of Medicine put out a report estimating that uh, responding to a pandemic threat costs $60 billion, but ongoing investment in preventative research to try and mitigate against a future threat is $1 billion per year. U.S. government investments have produced malaria drugs just for children, which have saved 750,000 young lives. An inexpensive meningitis vaccine has prevented nearly 400,000 deaths. In addition, large pharmaceutical companies like Johnson & Johnson say they need the government to back their research. We cannot do it on our own, and that's definitive. Companies, researchers involved in global health, and even some Republican lawmakers are voicing their opposition to the proposed cuts. He's not going to get all that he wants, but he's going to get something. If budget cuts continue, experts fear that the U.S. will lose its position as a world leader in medical research and the world will be more vulnerable to the spread of infectious disease. Countries, including the U.S., could become more vulnerable to bioterrorism. Absolutely vital that we get to a point where we're able to respond to any disease threat that comes our way, no matter how it comes our way, whether it's a bioterrorism attack or a naturally occurring disease outbreak like Ebola. And finally, U.S. Research and Development, or R&D, creates jobs. U.S. government investments in global health R&D not only save millions of lives around the world, but they support U.S. jobs, U.S. economy, and U.S. health security. But the Secretary of Health says if the CDC and NIH cut administrative costs, they won't lose programs. And I think what the, uh, the budget is trying to do is to, being the first step in this process is trying to bring focus to the kinds of things that we ought to be able to do to get a uh, greater, bigger bang for our buck. Congress will once again tackle these issues when the lawmakers return from their summer recess in September. Carol Pearson, VOA News, Washington. According to UNICEF, poor access to sanitary needs hinders one in ten girls in sub-Saharan Africa from going to school during their monthly period and this affects their performance. In Uganda, a startup is helping to keep girls in school through an eco-smart innovation which provides a cheaper option made from sugarcane by products. Take a look. Yes. Skipping school is a recipe for poor grades, but for some girls in Uganda, lack of affordable sanitary pads during their menstrual period leaves them no choice. A group of young entrepreneurs in Kampala are on a mission to keep girls in school by making cheap sanitary towels out of sugarcane byproducts. Some of you uh, cannot afford a pad. Cut into shapes just like the regular pads, the local startup hopes that their Echo Smart pads will help as many schoolgirls who miss about 20% of the school year. Many girls cannot afford the sanitary pads on the market. When you go to schools, you'll be surprised to know that some will miss school because they are going through their menstrual period, the four days of their menstrual period. They do not have the right materials to use. They are so embarrassed to be in public because they will stay in their dresses and everyone will laugh at them, so they choose to stay at home. 
The group says its choice of sugar cane is because of the plant's absorbent fiber when processed. The company works with technicians at Uganda's Industrial Research Institute in Kampala. The program is sponsored by the UN Population Fund and other partners. You have the sugar cane and the water that is already steamed coming in here. So what you're doing is boiling the sugar cane residue, mainly to remove the sugar content and to soften it. Ekif Smart Pads is still working to perfect the process of making quality sanitary pads and in large quantity to reach more girls. And when it is finished, the team has been collecting feedback from students about their innovation. Those eco pads, they will help those girls how, because some girls they are poor, they don't have money to buy other pads. We know, now realize that we are supposed to produce a pad that is in different sizes that is able to accommodate for a, 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 a low like the, the low flowing girl and also the high flows and it has also shown us that we should produce a pad that is that is comfortable. According to the United Nations Children's Agency, UNICEF, keeping girls in school is one of the most effective strategies of combating child marriage and helping them attain their full potential. And that's our show for today. You're watching Africa 54. I'm Esther Gidu Ewart in Washington. Be sure to watch Africa 54 on the VOA website at voaafrica.com. You can find all our shows there and also get the world's top news stories around the clock. I'm Esther Gidu Ewart in Washington. Well, we look forward to bringing you another show next week. Channels TV is your source for news and other programming. I'm Chamberlain Osso. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.